Hi everyone, I have read your practicum logs number one and read your reflective exercise also number one and posted feedback into the in the Blackboard um, system for your review. I want to remind you that with your practicum logs, you're going to see your points in the inline grading, but there won't be any comments. You're going to find the detailed comments um, loaded into Typhon where your log um, was placed in the external documents. I did go in to make sure that everyone had put in their final version of their goals and objectives um, to make sure those were done as well. Just some notes about the, the practicum log process. I had I sent many of you a note that your time log needed to be created. Most of you, the error you made was in breaking out all of your hours into subcategories like research and your goals and objectives, um, but then you took it out of the shift total column. If you think of the shift total column, that's the, the farthest one to your left. It gives you the roll up total number of hours that was spent during that day. Sometimes you're not going to break it down into subcategories, but if you do, you don't change the um, shift total. So if you were in your clinical area for six hours and three of those hours were devoted to your goals and objectives, then your shift total column would have six of those hours. And then under your goals and objectives, there would be a three telling me that you spent three of those six hours developing goals and objectives with your preceptor. So when you look at the bottom of that column, um, there's a total that when I look and I filter for the class of 624, I mean 618, um, under 618, I'll be able to see you making progress towards your 50 hours that's required for your practicum setting. So um, if you've made that error, it's an easy thing to do. Go in, edit it, um, and then save your edits, and then you'll be good to go. And send me an email and let me know that you've made those corrections. The other thing to do is make sure that when you set your time for your log that you also click on the correct course. I realize this is the first log so it's really easy to remember that you shift um, shift it from 617 to 618, but remember that your hours need to be properly, properly allocated to the correct course. So for audit purposes, when you've graduated, we'll look under 617 and find 50 hours, 618, 619, and 620, and they'll all um, collate together correctly. Um, so those things need to be corrected if you've made those errors. The In general, the logs looked great, especially for your first one. The only area that, um, from a content standpoint, that I want to continue to encourage you to do is make sure when you're in your supportive narrative section, that's your second section, that you're not just telling me the logistics and the mechanics of what you did that day, although that's important, but I also want you to tell me what your thoughts and feelings were about what you were experiencing. Um, if you were teaching that day, how were you feeling? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you excited? Um, were you anxious? What were your What were your experiences when you were up there? Um, how did you manage those things? Again, I think I said this last week, this is where the rubber hits the road. Your thoughts and feelings about the practicum experience is as relevant as the practicum experience. So I do want to know how you spent your day, um, but I also want to know how you feel about how you spent your day. So go through the um, feedback that was provided. Make sure that you read the feedback that was provided and make changes for your practicum log too. Um, if changes aren't made, commonly um, you'll see me give you feedback that says, please go review the feedback that was given to you during practicum log number one. So make, make your um, efforts to address that early on so that you're able to earn the points as you move through the course. The reflective exercise, um, those were great. The only comment I have about the reflective exercise was that um, from an APA standpoint, I want to remind you to go back into your APA manual and look at the value and purpose of level headings. At this point, if you're submitting an eight page paper, it is inadequate to just put level one headings throughout. I was relieved to see level headings for most of you. Some um, didn't quite put the, the need for headings together and, and headings weren't included at all. Um, if you've done level one and you're getting comfortable with it, that's great. But at this point, the complexity of your work in a 600 level course, you need to start getting more comfortable in adding level two and level three. The longer your paper, the more complex your concepts, the more important it is that you learn to apply those level headings. It guides your writing, but it also guides me, your reader, in understanding what your thought process and being able to follow your content as your um, paper progresses. Um, 
Uh, the other thing from APA is make sure that your references are all less than five years old. If you choose to use an article, something that's over five years old, the only reason you should do that is if for some reason it is a seminal or historic work. Um, then that would be permissible, but that is going to be a rare event. Most of the time, seminal stuff is about theory um, or frameworks or models. Very rarely are you going to find an article that's going to be seminal about a concept. So be very careful when you think about the date of an article. Just because it matches what you're thinking or supports your ideas, it needs to be current um, in, its, in its publication so that you can use it. So remember, less than five years old. Um, one of the things that several of you did when you were writing this paper, when you were looking at the um, importance of understanding how to meet the needs of our English as a second language student group, was really thinking about the student as not just our student, but also fellow Christians. Um, your classmate Palmer did a great job of reminding um, me of this as I was reading her paper. She wrote that in Col Colossians 3.11, it is said by Paul, Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave, free, but Christ in all and in all. God created us in his image, so even though we may look and speak differently, we are all his creation. This will be my nurse educator motto. I think that's such a wonderful way, not just dealing with our English as second language students, but all of our students and understanding that they are a diverse group of students, that they bring their life experiences, their culture, their ethnicity, their thoughts, their feelings. They bring that all into the classroom. And if we can truly see them as just a fellow Christian, deserving of our accommodation and our grace and our patience, I think that makes us better educators. And it certainly is our call as Christian nurse educators to treat those people in that way. Um, so I appreciate, appreciate it, Palmer's insight in that. Um, when we look to next week, you're asked to look at one of the um, Liberty School of Nursing Mo uh, virtues, to pick one of those virtues and to develop a paper based on that virtue. Please don't make the mistake of trying to cover all the virtues. Um, go back in and read the assignment carefully, read the rubric carefully, and develop your paper accordingly using a selected virtue. Think about the virtue as it applies to your role as a nurse educator or a nursing student. Um, it is intended to be a written devotional to nursing students. So contextually, try to stay on topic and be organized in your approach to that paper. I want to remind you, as I said earlier, your APA application is important at a level 600 course. You should really be very crisp and tight in how you apply APA um, to your content work. I hope you guys have a great week as you go through the feedback that's been provided to you. If you have questions or concerns or you want to discuss it, please know that I'm here. I'm happy to talk about it um, and, and help you work through any issues you may have. I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I have to tell you on a funny note, I wrote my um, good morning announcement this morning and was jokingly saying how nostalgic I get um, as soon as it starts to get cool and um, I start to rush the holidays and I keep a list of um, Pandora jazz um, stations so that while I'm teaching I can listen to kind of instrumental music and this morning I clicked one of the jazz stations and about four hours later I realized that I was listening to Christmas jazz music. I promise it was not on purpose. My subconscious must have been talking to me um, and the fact that it took me four hours to realize it should tell you how hard I was concentrating on your work. I hope you guys have a great week. Touch face if I can help you with anything. Take care.